So I'm finding out this morning that the one of the moderators, the, the lady that was up there is actually Kamala's sorority sister. So you have the sorority sister and then you have her best friend that is one of the execs. So now we know why there was a three on one debate. So we know that it, it was a bias debate. No questions asked. So you're celebrating for nothing because she never did get to her policy. She never answered any questions. They never fact checked her on anything. I want to bring something else to your attention because a lot of people are distorted in, in knowing what a real leader is. See, Trump is a real leader. A real leader is not perfect by any means. For my Christians out there, you know David in the Bible wasn't perfect. You know Paul wasn't perfect. Noah wasn't perfect. Solomon wasn't perfect. Abraham wasn't perfect. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. King Cyrus, none of those leaders were perfect, but nonetheless, they were leaders. See, a leader shows up. They don't hide from the people. She's saying that she's the part of the people. Then where were you for three and a half years? You didn't show up. You didn't show up for the families that was in Afghanistan. You didn't show up. All you did was hid behind the keyboard all weekend and talk about the real leader that showed up. You didn't show up to the border. Trump went to the border, even though he wasn't president. He showed up to the border. And for all you black people out there, she didn't even show up to the NABJ. Trump showed up to the NABJ. You know, so the only leader that's perfect was Jesus Christ. But even back then in his day, they would have called him an imperfect leader because he didn't concede to their uh, itching of ears and what they what they wanted to do. He wasn't all about optics. All he was was his about his father's business, standing on the truth. All right, guys. So we got to talk about some news on a potential second debate between former President Trump and Kamala Harris, because immediately after the first debate, the Kamala campaign insisted on another debate, which was a little bit of a shock to me at the time, because I thought that if the Kamala campaign believed that she won the debate, then they would not be willing to do another debate. Now, here's the thing. The fact that Kamala Harris has insisted on having another debate means that at the very least, her campaign, her advisors, her handlers do not feel as if Kamala Harris got her moment, right? She did not knock out Trump, which was the whole point of the ABC debate, okay? Best believe going into the debate, Kamala Harris wanted to knock out Trump. She wanted to basically end the election right there. And unfortunately for Kamala Harris, she was not able to do so because she's not that talented, right? I mean, she just doesn't have it in her. And this is despite having help, okay? Because the ABC moderators were clearly biased in favor of Kamala Harris. They were fact-checking Trump all night long, including on opinions, such as whether or not Trump's claims about the election are sarcasm, uh, while Kamala Harris received no fact-checks, although she basically lied all night long. He said, the baby will be born and we will decide what to do with the baby. In other words, we'll execute the baby. There is no state in this country where it is legal to kill a baby after it's born. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. If I hear you bring up Springfield, uh, Ohio, and, and ABC News did reach out to the city manager there. Uh, he told us there had been no credible reports of specific claims of pets being harmed. You repeatedly uh, falsely claimed that you won, many times saying you won in a landslide. Crime here is up and through the roof. Despite their fraudulent statements that they made, crime in this country is through the roof. President Trump, as you know, the FBI says overall violent crime is actually coming down in this country. But Vice excuse President me, the Harris, FBI defraud. They were defrauding statements. They they didn't include the worst cities. They didn't include the cities with the worst crime. Tim Walls and I are both gun owners. We're not taking anybody's guns away. So stop with the continuous lying about this stuff. We have to have a buyback program, and I support a mandatory buyback program. It's got to be smart. We got to do it the right way. Do you believe in the mandatory buyback of quote unquote assault weapons? I do believe that we need. To to do buyback. Let's remember Charlottesville, where there was a mob of people carrying tiki torches, spewing anti-Semitic hate. And what did the president then at the time say? There were fine people on each side.
And you had some very bad people in that group. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. Live and after the fact that we had our eye on, we know the moderators pushed back on former President Trump five times and on Vice President Kamala Harris zero times. We fact-checked her, but they didn't. Time magazine will also was also forced to take back a so-called fact check of its own. That media outlet claimed Trump's point that Kamala Harris supported transgender surgeries for illegal immigrants in prison was false. The vice president did, in fact, check yes in support on a survey she filled out during her 2019 presidential run. Yeah, so you see that, you heard that. Apparently, the debate was so rigged that even a former Clinton advisor came out and was like, hey, I have a problem with what happened, okay? What ABC did ruined future presidential debates. And it probably didn't help that Lindsey Davis is a sorority sister of Kamala Harris. Lindsey Davis, Robin Roberts is right. It's a sorority thing. I don't understand it all. So you have to explain it to everybody sure. who's a sorority sister of Kamala Harris. Right. Well, you know, uh, pearls are a symbol of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, which she pledged while she was at Howard University. And the strand of pearls is symbolic of the unity and the sisterhood. OK, but on this day, there's actually a Facebook page of women who say wear pearls on January 20th, 2021. And hundreds of thousands of women are apparently wearing pearls in, in support of of, of her well, here, here, but here's a fact he he did get pushed back from them they did try to fact check him in real time but there were numerous questions that she would not answer and she did tell several lies and got no fact checking so i think if you're going to lay down a marker that we're going to push back on these candidates you got to do it to none or you got to do it to both they, they asked her directly directly no. in the very first question if she thought they had any responsibility for the economic conditions or that people were better off than they were right. for and yeah. she completely ignored it they asked her on immigration. Mm -hmm. Why did you wait until six months before the election to do anything? And she completely ignored it. And so fact checking and, and barbs aside, those are the two most important issues in the election. They asked her, she completely ignored them and they spent all their time going after Trump and didn't follow up on any of that. I thought it was ridiculous. Yes, uh, my reaction is I'm really concerned about what ABC did. When the refs put their finger on the scale, you gotta throw out the, the score of the game. What would have happened in that debate had they challenged Harris and said, you know, that's not right, what you said there about Charlottesville. Right. We don't know how she would have reacted. And then Trump wouldn't have had to spend all his time on the divisa. I think they did a real disservice to the voters of America when they did that. And they put in jeopardy the institutions of debate. Well, and look, for the candidate on your side of the political aisle, it might have helped her. You know, I mean, if, if you want to get sharp, you have to rub up against something that will sharpen you. And it might have even helped her quiet down those in your party who still have so many questions about her policies. Wow, wow. So you see that? You hear that? Lindsey Davis should not have been a moderator. She is a sorority sister of Kamala Harris, which would make it harder for her to be an objective journalist, something that ABC should have addressed before the debate. But because uh, Lindsey Davis's job as a moderator for the debate was not to be an objective journalist, apparently ABC didn't care, right? They didn't see a problem with this clear and obvious conflict of interest, okay? And it's not like Lindsey Davis did all the fact checking. She just did it through her uh, white liberal friend, David Muir, who did most of the <laughs> debating against Trump, right? It was basically David Muir, the token white guy versus Trump, who is the white presidential candidate on stage, and Lindsey Davis, who is the token so-called woman of color, making sure that Kamala Harris, the woman of color on stage, uh, receives no tough questions, no pushbacks, no fact checks, okay? That is how they set it up, okay? It is plain as day to see what ABC did to rig this debate. And as a result, President Trump has made an announcement in response to Kamala Harris challenging him to a third debate that, hey, there will be no third debate because I believe that I won and Kamala Harris wanting another debate is proof and evidence that she knows that she lost or at the very least she didn't get the moment that she was looking for. So therefore, there will not be a third debate. Take a look. But when a prize fighter loses a fight, you've seen a lot of fights, right? The first words out of that fighter's mouth is, I want a rematch. I want a rematch. And that's what she said. I want a rematch. Polls clearly show that I won the debate against comrade Kamala Harris.
And as you probably know, because, you know, when you say Harris, does anybody know who Harris is? No. Kamala is a very different kind of a word. Nice name. Very nice name. But you know her as Kamala. You don't know her as Harris. When you say Harris, everyone says, who the hell is that, right? But she immediately called for a second debate, which means that she was like a prize fighter that lost a fight. We had two debates, though. I had a debate with Crooked Joe Biden, right? And I had another debate with her. She and Crooked Joe have destroyed our country with millions of criminals and mentally deranged people pouring into the USA, totally unchecked, unvetted, and with inflation bankrupting our middle class. It has gotten bad. Everyone knows this and all of the other problems caused by Kamala and Joe. It was discussed in great detail during the first debate with Joe and the second debate with Comrade Harris. Just moments ago, former President Trump on True Social weighed in with huge news on the prospect of another presidential debate, saying, quote, there will be no third debate. This announcement coming as he and Vice President Kamala Harris are back on the campaign trail today after their contentious debate on Tuesday, which many conservatives and some Trump allies viewed as a win for Harris. Now, right now, Harris is speaking in battleground North Carolina, where she too weighed in on a third debate and that possibility just moments ago. And I believe we owe it to the voters to have another debate. Regardless of who won Tuesday's debate and whether we get another one, this very close race is far from over. Anything can happen in the next eight weeks before Election Day. And of course, early voting is kicking off, right? In fact, Democrats today are being realistic. They're giving themselves a reality check. And practically every conversation, public or private, Harris aides and Harris herself are tempering expectations and continuing to insist she is the underdog to avoid getting burned by overconfidence. Yeah, so you've seen that, you hear that. Now, Trump did, in fact, announce this on True Social that there will be no debates, okay? And that Kamala Harris <laughs> should focus on what she should have done during the last almost four-year period. There will be no third debate, okay? This is what Trump is saying. Now, what do I think about this? Well, I think there's a few ways that you can look at this, okay? Since the ABC debate was obviously rigged, hopefully the undecided voters these are the people that really matter, okay? Not the people who already are going to vote for Trump or the people that are already going to vote for Harris. I don't think there are many people who were voting for Trump or voting for Kamala Harris going into the debate that changed their mind. So it really comes down to the undecided people, the people who are still in the middle or maybe they may lean Trump a little bit or lean Kamala a little bit and their minds can be changed, right? Uh, amongst those people, you're not going to know who actually won the debate until a week from now. OK, give it about a week or two, let it kind of settle in and where the polls are at will determine whether or not Trump should actually do another debate. Because as of right now, OK, with the way that most people are evaluating this debate, the mainstream of media is saying that Kamala had the best performance ever and she won, blah, blah, blah. But that's not a reflection of how the American people feel in the actual effect of the debate. Remember, these are the same people that claim that Hillary won all the debates with Trump. And guess what? Trump went on to win the election, okay? So, again, the actual winner of the debate is not determined by the media. It's determined by the undecided voters, the people who genuinely use the debates in order to determine who they want to vote for, okay? And we don't know how many of these people are out there. Uh, and we also don't know the actual effect that this debate had. Because, again, if you're undecided and you're a critical thinker, you definitely watch that debate and knew that the ABC moderators were rigging it in favor of Kamala Harris. And we know that a lot of undecided voters have basically said that, yeah, I didn't learn that much about Kamala Harris, even though she didn't drop the ball, right? But there was nothing spectacular, okay? There was nothing that Kamala did to make them say, you know what, I'm voting for her, right? Like, she's the person that should be the next president of the United States, okay? So if the polls come out, let's say a week or two from now, and they're unchanged or who knows if trump gains a slight lead which going into the debate uh trump was gaining momentum kamala's momentum had halted okay that's what was happening uh if that trend continues despite the debate and what happened at the debate 
then Trump won a debate, right? I mean, that's just what it comes down to, okay? You can say, well, Kamala technically won a debate. Yeah, but again, who really decides the debates, okay? It's the undecided voters, right? It is the people that are in the middle, okay? Who don't know who they want to vote for. And if those people shift towards Trump, then Trump won the debate, right? In their eyes, those are the only people who matter. They're the real judges, okay? So we're gonna see in a week or so, now, if that's the case, if that happens, then no, Trump doesn't need to do another debate. And he will be justified in not doing another debate because of what we saw from ABC and the moderators in this debate with Kamala Harris. However, if the opposite scenario happens, if you have Kamala Harris start to pull ahead of Trump in which she gets back to Joe Biden's 2020 numbers, then that presents a different scenario, okay? That is a different issue because at that point, Trump would need another debate in order to try to turn things around, okay? Because if Kamala Harris starts to gain momentum after this debate, then that means that the debate mattered and that people decided that I'm gonna vote for Kamala Harris. And in that scenario, the scenario that Kamala Harris is hoping for, by the way, uh, the Trump team would need another debate, okay? And a debate would play out in the Trump team's favor because at this point, Trump doesn't have anything to lose by debating Kamala Harris. Everybody already knows who Trump is, okay? They know what he did under his first administration. Uh, Kamala is the politician on stage that people don't know enough about, right? So she has a lot more to lose by doing another debate. And the Kamala team knows that. They know that if they do another debate with Trump, that it is unlikely that Kamala's gonna get the knockout that she's looking for and that it is possible that Trump will be more prepared and have a better performance than he did in the second debate, the initial debate that they had together, and that could potentially hurt her campaign, okay? It is much more likely that Kamala Harris would get knocked out than it is that Kamala Harris would significantly hurt Trump, okay? Which is why uh, in the scenario where Kamala Harris is pulling ahead in the race, okay, she's approaching Joe Biden numbers, um, I don't think she would be willing to do another debate, okay? I don't think she'd be willing to do another debate at all if that is what ends up happening, okay? Which is part of the reason why uh, I kind of wish that Trump took a different approach in regards to the third debate, right? I think that he should have came out and said, listen, uh, we should do the debate on Fox News and it doesn't matter who the moderators are, okay? I know that Trump doesn't like all the people at Fox News and that's fine, but it would definitely be more fair no matter who the moderators are for the most part uh, than what ABC News did. And if Kamala Harris doesn't accept that, then you say, okay, well, if she can't do that, then no more debates, right? Because I think that if Trump took another crack at Kamala Harris, I think he would do a much better job, especially on a platform like Fox News, okay? And it's not because Fox News would necessarily be biased towards Trump, but because it would be a neutral platform where at the very least you know there's a decent chance that the moderators will not be debating you, right? You don't have to debate against the moderators, okay? You could actually really have that back and forth with Kamala Harris without having to worry about getting ganged up on, right? So uh, if that scenario plays out in the sense that you have Kamala Harris pulling ahead of Trump, then that puts Trump in a not so good situation, optically speaking, because he's going to need another debate. But at that point, Kamala would just say, well, no, we're not doing another debate because Trump already said that he doesn't want to do another debate. So we've moved on at this point. Okay. We have things that we plan to do. We can't do another debate. And this is why I think optically speaking, the move that I would have made is that I would have said Fox News a bust. At the very least, if you're saying Fox News a bust, people can understand it because we all saw how rigged ABC was, okay? And it makes it look like, hey, you want another debate, right? Like you're not running away from her. You're not scared. You know, all the things that the mainstream little media is going to say, okay? That's not a card they can play as easily because you've already basically said, hey, it's Fox News a bust. And you already know she's not going to do it. So if she refuses to do a second debate and you're falling behind in the polls, at the very least, you can say, well, Kamala's scared to do another debate. We usually do three presidential debates. Why she only want to do one debate? She just said that she wanted to do a second debate, but for whatever reason, she's afraid to do a second debate at Fox News, right? He could play that card, okay? He would have that leverage. But now, he doesn't really have that leverage because he's basically said that there's not going to be any more debates, period. However, if the polls stay the same, or if Trump pulls ahead, 
okay, in the next week or two following this debate, then it was a good move for Trump to come out and to say no debates, right, right after the debate, because at that point, there would be no reason for him to debate again. He wouldn't give Kamala Harris the opportunity to knock him out, although that is extremely unlikely. I don't think she has the ability to do it, but at the very least, she don't even give her opportunity to get that moment that she's really looking for, which is the only reason she proposed that second debate, okay? Um, so if he pulls ahead, then, hey, this is a good move, okay? In the sense that you don't need to debate Kamala Harris again. It's not hurting you in the polls. You're still competitive. And in an even race, it is likely that Trump would win on election day, just considering how he usually overperforms the polls, okay? And if that holds true going into the election, okay, with no more debates, then Trump is likely good to go, right? The debates didn't really matter. So there's a lot of chess going on here. The Kamala Harris campaign, they're playing chess. The Trump campaign, they have just basically responded with their chess move. And how this all is going to play out um, will be determined by what happens over the next few weeks in regards to who made the best move here okay with the debate so let me know what you guys think make sure you like comment and subscribe most importantly share a black conservative perspective peace